What's the best way to learn statistics and probability? For K-10 math, statistics only focuses on some basic concepts. Mean, or arithmetic average, you add all of the numbers, then divide the sum by how many items there are. Median, the middle number of a data set when all of the items are written in order, from least to greatest. If there are two numbers in the middle, just calculate the mean of the two numbers. Mode, the item in a data set that occurs most often. There could be one mode, more than one mode, or no mode. Range, the difference between the minimum and maximum unit in a data set. We will focus more on probability, which is more complicated. Probability is the likelihood that something will happen. It's a number between 0 and 1, and can be written as a percent. Before we start, you should be familiar with algebra. Now, let's start. What are the basic concepts for probability? There are some concepts that you need to know. An action is what is happening, like flipping a coin. The outcomes are all of the possible results of an action. When we flip a coin, the outcomes are either heads or tails. An event is any outcome, or group of outcomes. When we flip a coin, both outcomes are equally likely to occur, and this feature is called random. To find the probability of an event P, we use a ratio to find out how likely it will happen. The complement of an event is the opposite of the event happening. The probability of an event plus the probability of its complement always equals 1. A compound probability combines at least two simple events, also known as a compound event. When we flip a coin twice, the outcomes are compound probability. It's also called an probability. Conditional probability refers to the chances that some outcome occurs given that another event has also occurred. It is often stated as the probability of B given A, where the probability of B depends on that of a happening. How to calculate the different types of probability? To calculate the in probability or compound probability, those events should happen independently from each other. Here is the formula. For example, if you roll a dice twice, what will be the probability of 3 and 3? To calculate the or probability, those events should happen independently from each other. Here is the formula. For example, if you roll a dice, what will be the probability of 1 or 3? To calculate the conditional probability, the event should be dependent on other events. For example, you draw a card from a poker deck. Then, if you draw another card, the probability of the second card will be different from the first card. Here is the formula. Now, let's have an example. If you draw an ace from a deck of 52 playing cards, what's the probability that you draw a second ace? You know there are only three aces left in the remaining 51 playing cards, so the answer is 3 over 51. If you use the formula to calculate, it will also be 3 over 51. You are welcome to leave some comments about your experiences learning math. What are permutation and combination? The term permutation refers to a mathematical calculation of the number of ways a particular set can be arranged. Repetition can be allowed, or there is no repetition allowed. A combination is an arrangement of objects where the order in which the objects are selected does not matter. Repetition can be allowed, or there is no repetition allowed. To make it simple, order is important to permutation, but has no effect on combination. For example, eight people joined a competition, but only three of them got prizes. If there is only one golden prize, one silver prize, and one bronze prize, this is a case for permutation, because order matters. However, if all the prizes are the same, this will become a case for combination, because order doesn't matter anymore. Permutation and combination are very useful to calculate probabilities. Here is an important mathematical operation factorial, which is the multiplication of all numbers between 1 and n. To calculate the permutation with repetition, the formula is n to the power of r, while n is the number of possibilities, and r is the number of choices. For example, for a combination lock, there are three numbers to choose from, and each number is from 0 to 9. The permutation will be 1000. To calculate the permutation without repetition, there is a formula, while n is the number of possibilities, and r is the number of choices. For example, eight people join a competition, but only three of them got prize. 
If there is only one golden prize, one silver prize, and one bronze prize, the permutation will be 336. There are two ways to think about this. Firstly, you can think of giving the prizes by order. When giving the golden prize, there are eight possibilities. When giving the silver prize, because one has already got a prize, there are only seven possibilities left. When giving the bronze prize, the remaining possibilities are only six. So you multiply 8, 7 and 6, that would be the answer for the permutation. Another way to think about it, you can assume everybody got a prize, so the permutation will be 8 factorial. However, there are only 3 prizes. So you need to exclude the other 5 prizes, with permutation of 5 factorial. So the answer will be 336. To calculate the combination without repetition, here is the formula. For example, eight people join a competition, but only three of them got prize. If all the prizes are the same, since one person can only get one prize, this is a combination without repetition. The combination will be 56. How to think about this? You already know that if the prizes are different, the permutation is 336. However, the prizes are actually the same, so the order of the three prizes is not important and we should exclude those permutations, which is 3 factorial. So the answer will become 56. To calculate the combination with repetition, here is the formula. For example, there are 5 flavors of ice cream, banana, chocolate, lemon, strawberry, and vanilla. We can have 3 scoops. How many variations will there be? Since you can choose all 3 scoops in banana, or 2 scoops in chocolate, the scoops you choose can be duplicated. This is a combination with repetition. The combination will be 35. How to think about this? Imagine there are five small boxes with the five flavors, banana, chocolate, lemon, strawberry, and vanilla. The five small boxes are ordered as B, C, L, S, and V. The task has been converted to a new task. You start from the first box with two choices, either scoop or move to the next box. You repeat your choices until you move to the last box and scoop all three flavors. What are the total possibilities? Assume you scoop banana at box B three times. Then move to the last box V. There are 3 plus 4 equals 7 possibilities, which is where R plus N minus 1 comes from. You can do any other types of actions, but the possibilities are always 7, which is the number of flavors plus the number of scoops minus 1. Then, you have three choices because you need to make three scoops. We can assume capital N equals R plus N minus 1, so the combination with repetition has been converted to a combination without repetition. Here we listed all the important concepts and knowledge in probability. With more practice, you can solve problems in probability with ease.